Hey, what's going on YouTube? It's Harrison and Sarah from True New England. This week we traveled to Ringe, New Hampshire to pay a visit to a historic and natural site called the Cathedral of the Pines. If you've been following us, then you'd have noticed that we took a little bit of a break from posting. And that was really much needed. A little over three weeks ago, we had this little guy come up to our door. We felt bad having never seen him before, and seeing that his stomach was shaved, we figured that it was somebody's pet, and he had just wandered a little too far away from home. So we took him in, started calling the local vets, as well as posting on all of the local Facebook groups to see if we could find his family. And then, just after about a week of looking, we found the kitty's owner. They do live on the same road as we do, and um, his name is Miko. We fully expected to be able to find his home, but it was still tough to see him go. And then we dealt with this. Okay, so update. We went to Best Buy, had the external hard drive looked at. Not good news. Uh, the guy came back and said that he couldn't access any of the files. Uh, and if we wanted to have someone go into it to actually physically reconfigure the whole hard drive to access all of our footage, uh, it would cost probably about $1,500. Yeah. Yeah. So we're trying to decide if that is... Worth it? <laughs> yeah, worth it. Like what, if it's almost like, I don't know, how likely is it we could retrieve that data and also just dealing with our broken hearts. <clears throat> yep, everything we filmed since January is on that hard drive. Uh, and that is a real gut punch. And we're gonna go home and drink now. But I, no, we're not. Are we? Yes, we are. That's right, we lost everything. All the footage from the last year of going out and filming things, poof, gone. To say the least, this was really devastating. We're actively trying to figure out a way to recover that footage without breaking the bank, but we knew that this weekend we needed to get out of the house and get back to doing what we love to do. We did a quick Google search and discovered a place that neither of us had actually heard of before, an open air cathedral with outdoor chapels, gardens, a cemetery, two ponds, and miles of walking trails that show you around 236 acre grounds, all situated with a beautiful view of Mount Monadnock. We saw the photos, read their mission and vision statements online on their website, and knew that this was a place that we had to visit. We know that it's now after Thanksgiving, but we went just before the holiday, and this was a perfect place to go for a walk, breathe, relax, and remember that despite all of the unfortunate events that happen from time to time, there is still so much to be thankful for. We hope you enjoy the video, and if you know of other hidden gems like this here in New England that you'd like us to check out, please leave a comment down below. In the fall of 1937, Sybil and Douglas Sloan III purchased this property in Ringe, New Hampshire. This is the Women's Memorial Bell Tower. This 55-foot tall tower was dedicated in 1967 to American women, both military and civilian. The Women's Memorial Bell Tower is believed to be the first monument in the United States devoted to women's service and sacrifice. The four bronze plaques over the archways were designed by Norman Rockwell and created by his son, Peter. Sybil and Douglas believed that their four children, Douglas, Sanderson, Margaret, and John, would one day build their homes on the property. In 1938, a hurricane blew through the region. It caused significant damage, and the property after the hurricane was described by Lieutenant Sanderson Sloan as he was serving in Germany during World War II with the Army Air Corps as such.
Lieutenant Sanderson died after his plane was shot down in Germany in 1944. The Sloan family planned a memorial service for him in August of 1945 on the knoll where he had planned to build his home with his wife and son. This was the beginning of what would become Cathedral of the Pines. We're here at Dinosaur Egg <laughs> Rock in the middle of the woods on the Cathedral of Pines grounds. Grounds. It's gorgeous. Yeah. You know, this is. I'm, I'm actually kind of sad that I didn't know that this existed uh, until yesterday when we were mm -hmm. kind of researching some places to go to get outside and uh, to just kind of relax and breathe. And this is a perfect spot yeah. to do that. It's a, it's a non-denominational spiritual center for people who want to come and honor those who have served the United States. Uh, and just walking around the grounds, there's just this very peaceful kind of feeling. Yeah, and that fits right in with the, their whole mission too. It's like fostering peace. And I think that even Dinosaur Rock would be a perfect place for somebody who wants to just bring a nice blanket and do a meditation and get closer to everything and themselves. Yeah, they have, nice. yeah, they have the, the gardens that you can walk through. And then we decided to come out on the trails that they have. They have almost like 250 something acres of land here where you can just go out and walk around and be you out in nature. Yeah, you can bring your pets to, uh, mm -hmm. and it looks like those were bag stations that they are providing. Always a good idea to bring your own, but in case you forget, they're prepared. Yeah, it's, nice. it's free to come and enjoy it. They accept donations. Yeah, uh, they're a nonprofit organization, so every little bit I'm sure helps them be able to preserve this and offer it to future generations. Yeah. Yeah. Want to get going? Yeah. It's magical here. It's magical. It's magical. Within the first five seasons of operation, an estimated 425,000 people visited the cathedral from across the United States and around the world. Over the years, prayer services have been held by 25 different religious denominations at the cathedral. Sadly, we couldn't see the altar of the nation, but we learned some really interesting information about the altar. It was built in 1946 and recognized by Congress in 1957 as a national memorial to American men and women who lost their lives in war. The stones that make up the main body of the altar come from all 50 states, and stones have come from the homes, libraries, or grave sites of many U.S. presidents. There's a stone from Plymouth, England, where the pilgrims left the Old World, and one from Plymouth Rock, Massachusetts, where they landed in the New. There are stones from the battlefields of Lexington, Concord, and Yorktown, where the American Revolution began and ended. Three stones from the Parthenon in Athens and a stone from the ancient Colosseum in Rome are also embedded in the altar. 
If you're interested in planning a visit, we provided a link to their website in the description below.